Mount St. Helens. That Mount St. Helens. Mount St. Helens. Mount St. Helens. So when Mount St. Helens woke up in the spring of 1980, uh, it was too good to be true. I could hardly believe that it was really happening. Mount St. Helens seems to be stirring awake again, with the U.S. Geological Survey, USGS, noting a recent uptick in seismic activity. In just the past week, 15 earthquakes were recorded, contributing to a total of 498 since February 1st. The biggest quake last week hit a magnitude of 0 0.6 while the most significant since February reached 2.0. Curiously, these tremors occurred at an average depth of 2.7 miles beneath the crater, a bit shallower than the previous average of 3.9 miles. Horrifying, isn't it? Since July 15th, 2023, over 400 quakes have rattled the region. What could this mean for the future of Mount St. Helens? With no changes detected in ground deformation or gas emissions, should we be concerned? Or is this simply nature's way of reminding us of its power? Future cracks. What lies ahead for Mount St. Helens research has indicated that short-term earthquake activity is typical at Mount St. Helens and is part of its normal behavior. Notably, the recent surge in seismicity is the most significant increase since the last eruption ended in 2008. However, even larger earthquake sequences in the late 80s and 90s didn't lead to eruptions. These small quakes occurring deep within the volcano are often associated with the pressurization of the magma transport system. This phenomenon, known as recharge, involves fresh magma entering the upper reservoir, creating stress and triggering earthquakes that can last for years without resulting in an eruption. Mount St. Helens, a volcanic awakening in 1980. On March 27, 1980, Mount St. Helens in Washington state erupted, kicking off a series of explosive volcanic events that would lead to one of the U.S deadliest eruptions. The peak explosion occurred on May 18th at 8.32 a.m., registering a volcanic explosivity index of 5, marking the most significant eruption since Lassen Peak in 1915. This disastrous event followed two months of seismic activity and steam eruptions caused by magma buildup, leading to a devastating landslide and explosive blast. The eruption generated an ash plume reaching 80,000 feet, impacting 11 states and parts of Canada and resulting in 57 fatalities, including notable individuals. With over $1 billion in damages, it reshaped the region and created the Mount St. Helens National Volcanic Monument, serving as a reminder of nature's formidable power. Beneath the surface, the volcanic tension. Rising, after being dormant since the 1840s, Mount St. Helens erupted with a series of earthquakes beginning March 15, 1980, culminating in a significant 4.2 magnitude quake on March 20th. This seismic activity led to the first steam-driven eruption on March 27th, sending ash 7,000 feet into the air. By late April, the north face had bulged dangerously, prompting warnings of a potential catastrophic eruption. On May May 18th, a magnitude 5.1 earthquake triggered the largest recorded sub-aerial landslide, resulting in a massive eruption that sent ash 80,000 feet into the atmosphere, devastated the surrounding area, claimed 57 lives, and caused over $1 billion in damages. Pyroclastic flows, a serious hazard in volcanic eruptions. The landslide at Mount St. Helens in 1980 exposed the site magma to lower pressure, triggering an explosive release of gas and high-pressure steam. Within seconds, the northward explosion sent a pyroclastic flow of volcanic gases, ash, and pumice racing down the mountain. Initially traveling at 220 miles per hour, the flow accelerated to 670 miles per hour, possibly surpassing the speed of sound. This blast devastated an area 23 miles wide and 19 miles long, flattening 230 square miles of forest. The superheated flow also flashed water into steam, causing a secondary explosion heard as far as British Columbia. Outcome from lateral blast. In the direct blast zone of Mount St. Helens, trees were snapped like twigs and the earth was stripped bare and scorched. 
The near supersonic blast, packed with volcanic debris, devastated areas up to 19 miles away. The blast zone was divided into three areas. The direct blast zone, where everything was destroyed. The directed blast zone, where trees were flattened in rows like grass. And the seared zone, where trees stood but were charred. Tragically, 57 people lost their lives, many to suffocation or burns from the intense heat. Later, flows. After the landslide, fresh magmatic debris created pyroclastic flows that formed fan-like patterns. During the May 18th eruption, at least 17 flows occurred, totaling about 0.05 cubic miles. Even weeks later, deposits remained extremely hot, fueling steam blast eruptions that continued for months, with one recorded on May 16th, 1981. The Elements Within, Exploring Volcanic Chemical Composition The ash from Mount St. Helens is composed of roughly 65% silicon dioxide, 18% aluminum oxide, 5% ferric oxide, 4% calcium oxide, 4% sodium oxide, and 2% magnesium oxide. Trace elements include 0.05. 0.09% chlorine, 0.02, 0.03% fluorine, and 0.09, 0.3% sulfur. The index of refraction of the ash, which indicates how light interacts with it, has a real part ranging from 1.5 to 1.6 for visible light. The ash settled in three layers. The bottom layer is dark gray with older rocks and crystals. The middle consists of glass shards and pumice, and the top layer contains very fine particles. The aftermath of how mudslides transformed the landscape. The eruption melted nearly all of Mount St. Helens' glaciers and snow, triggering massive lahars, volcanic mudflows that impacted three of the mountain's four stream drainage systems starting as early as 8.50 a.m. These mudflows raced down at speeds of up to 90 miles per hour, 140 kilometers per h, before slowing to about three miles per hour 4.8 kilometers per H. In wider river areas, they mixed with tephra and created larger lahars, flooding the Tautal River and its forks. By 1 p.m., a 12-foot high, 4 a.m. wall of muddy water was reported, and the flow eventually added around 3,900,000 cubic yards, 3 million cubic meters of debris to the Columbia River, temporarily closing a busy shipping channel and costing Portland an estimated $5 million. Deadliest volcanic event and its outcome. The May 18, 1980 eruption was the deadliest and most destructive volcanic event in the contiguous United States. The blast directly killed 57 people and obliterated 200 homes, 47 bridges, 15 miles of railways, and 185 miles of highways. Additionally, two individuals died in visibility-related accidents, and two more suffered fatal heart attacks from shoveling ash. President Jimmy Carter, who surveyed the damage, remarked it resembled a moonscape. Over one cubic mile of material was ejected, with a quarter being fresh lava. The eruption caused extensive ecological damage, killing wildlife and destroying crops, while releasing energy equivalent to 1,600 Hiroshima bombs. Evaluate damage and cleanup challenge due to ash. The ash falls from the eruption caused significant disruptions in transportation, sewage disposal, and water treatment. Visibility dropped, leading to the closure of highways, including a week and a half closure of Interstate 90. Airports in eastern Washington also shut down, canceling over a thousand commercial flights Communities faced the monumental task of removing about 2.4 million cubic yards of ash, costing $2.2 million and taking 10 weeks in Yakima. Cities utilized old quarries and landfills for disposal, while Portland's mayor threatened fines for businesses that neglected ash removal from their properties. Consequences Mount Sesti Helens had to bear. The Mount St. Helens eruption caused an estimated $1.1 billion in damages. Three $3.4 billion today, leading Congress to allocate $951 million for disaster relief, mainly for the Small Business Administration, U.S. Army Corps House of Engineers, and FEMA. Unemployment surged tenfold, but stabilized with timber salvaging and ash cleanup efforts. While residents experienced emotional stress, most remained in the area. Initially, 
tourism suffered, but Mount St. Helens regained its appeal, resulting in reopened visitor centers and heightened interest in the volcano's recovery. Scientists track magma, recharge under St. Helens. Since the 1980 eruption, Mount St. Helens has remained active, with five more explosive events in 1980 and at least 21 eruptions by early 1990. Continuing until 2008, the May 25th eruption sent ash nine miles into the atmosphere, impacting western Washington and Oregon. Later eruptions in June and July reached 10 miles high, while by 1987, a new dome had grown to over 3,000 feet wide. Currently, around 350 earthquakes since February indicate possible magma recharge, though experts warn this doesn't ensure an eruption. The USGS closely monitors the volcano. What do you think the future holds for Mount St. Helens? Are we on the verge of another eruption? Did you enjoy this exploration? Hit that subscribe button for more thrilling content. Your likes and comments mean the world to us. Let's keep the conversation going. More astonishing discoveries are just around the corner.